Should the Buccaneers be interested in trading for a high profile player? That and more on today's episode of Locked on Bucks. You are Locked on Buccaneers, your daily Tampa Bay Buccaneers podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up and welcome into this Thursday episode of Locked On Bucks, your daily podcast covering the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to thank you for making Locked On Bucks your first listener view every day. Don't forget you can subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. And of course, you can follow along on Twitter. I am James Yarko at JRCO underscore Bucks, credentialed member of the media covering your Tampa Bay Buccaneers as deputy editor of SB Nation's BucksNation.com. Here with you every Monday through Friday, along with the everydayers. And for that, I want to share my appreciation for your continued support of the show. One of the ways you can support the show is become a Locked on Bucks insider. You're going to get news, rumors, updates, general thoughts, one-on-one conversations with me via text message. Go to joinsubtext.com slash Locked on Bucks or click the link in the show notes to become an insider today. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. As the playoffs wind down, the sports stop sporting like we want them to, but this summer FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Todd Bowles names a key starter and praises him in a recent interview, and Bleacher Report names who they think the Bucks' biggest bust will be. But we're going to start things off with a question I got on Twitter from a long, long time everydayer, Greco. And Greco said, would you trade Godwin for Ayuk, assuming the money would work on Tampa Bay's side, P.S., This is purely hypothetical. Grico, thank you for the question, and it's great to hear from you again. Grico was one of the people that used to call into our voicemail line religiously before that whole thing just stopped working. We could not, David and I both tried numerous times, we could not get it to work again. I would love to get it up and running, Uh, so I'm going to look into that again and and try to get something similar going. But Grico, here's my answer for you. Uh, The short answer is no, I would not trade Godwin for Ayuk, but that doesn't make for a very long opening segment, so I'm going to expand and tell you why I wouldn't do it. I understand the potential and the draw that fans would have for a player like Ayuk. That said, Chris Godwin is the perfect player for the role that he's going to be asked to play in Liam Cohen's offense, and I'm not sure that Brandon Ayuk is. Ayuk is an incredible athlete. It can do plenty of things that Godwin can't, but that doesn't mean that he's the right fit to replace him in this system. That's why the Bucs drafted Jalen McMillan, because he can play that role should Chris Godwin leave as a free agent. Ayuk is more of that Tyreek Hill kind of player, that, and that's not what the Bucs are looking for in their slot receiver. Now, that's also not to say that Hill or Ayuk can't play in the slot. They both very much can, but they're used in ways to highlight their speed and athleticism. This role, Chris Godwin's role, is about being able to withstand the physical punishment of being a possession receiver going over the middle and dealing with a lot of contact. That's what he's built to do. Ayuk isn't. He's a smaller receiver compared to Godwin, And that's why he's one of those players that gets used in a hybrid role. Not the hybrid role the same way that his teammate Debo Samuel is, but they move him all over the place to get the right matchup to utilize that speed and that athleticism. Godwin is going to take 80 to 85% of his snaps out of the slot. Of course, the other issue is the money. And I know you said if the money works on Tampa side, but I really don't see how it can. Ayuk wants a mega, mega deal. I'm not sure he deserves Justin Jefferson or Tyreek Hill money, but that's what he wants. The Bucs are already paying two receivers over $20 million a year, and I know what you're going to say. But James, if you trade Godwin, then you're still only paying two receivers receivers $20 million each. Well, that's true, but also it's not 
true. If you trade Godwin, you're still on the hook for $26 million in dead cap this season. So then you're essentially paying over 60, even over $70 million for your top two receivers. And you can justify trading away Godwin for Ayuk, or, or I'm sorry, let me rephrase. Could you justify trading away Godwin for Ayuk and then turning around and giving Ayuk the extension that he wants and paying him more than your future Hall of Fame receiver that's going into his 11th season with the team? You want to know how to upset your locker room? You do something like that and get the face of your franchise and beloved player real mad at you uh, that you not only traded away Godwin for an outsider, but then you made him one of the highest paid players at his position in the NFL. Not only that, it's going to take draft capital too. Godwin for Ayuk isn't a one-for-one -one kind of deal. The 49ers have wisely maintained their desire to not move him. So you're not making a call to a desperate team looking to unload a guy for pennies on the dollar, knowing that they're going to lose them. And, and you're going to have to just give away like a sixth round pick in order to get Ayuk. You're talking a second rounder plus Godwin at the very least. And I say second rounder because my assumption right now is that the Bucks are going to be picking at the lower end of the second round. They're going to be picking in the 20 somewhere along with the other playoff teams. If you were the uh, Arizona Cardinals or the uh, Tennessee Titans, and you're going to have probably a top 15 pick, you could probably get away with the third rounder. With the Bucks. that third rounder is going to be too low. They're going to have to pay up and give one of those late second rounders. So, and in, in even at that, it may cost an additional pick or a pick swap. At this stage, I think what the Buccaneers have done at wide receiver is exactly what they should have done. You draft a young potential stud to share wide receiver three duties with the possibility of becoming the number two as early as next season. You locked up your superstar. You still have Godwin for at least this year, hopefully beyond, and you can get something worked out. Trey Palmer is still there. Rakeem Jarrett is still there. Then you bring in Shepard, who has a relationship with Baker Mayfield to provide some depth and some bright spots throughout the season. As electric as Brandon Ayuk is, I think if somebody trades for him, it has the high potential of not working. Ayuk is built for Shanahan's system, and his production may not be as high elsewhere. At the end of the day, the Bucs shouldn't and probably don't have any interest in him. Now, if he doesn't get traded and he becomes a free agent next year, we can revisit the conversation at that point. But I still think it's unlikely given that they'd have to pay him more than they're paying Evans. And I just don't think Jason Light is willing to cross that line. But stranger things have happened. One other kind of thing of note, Godwin is going to be entering his age 29 season next year in 2025. Ayuk is going to be turning 27 just after this season. So you really aren't getting you know a ton younger at the position. I would rather they just extend Godwin than give him up and then trade for someone like Brandon Ayuk, who honestly may not be in the league as long as Chris Godwin will. Once he starts to slow down, he won't be nearly as effective of a receiver as he is now. Todd Bowles announces a key starter on the defense. That is next on today's episode of Locked On Bucks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. And LinkedIn isn't just a job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job, but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. So hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. 
LinkedIn is also constantly looking for ways to make the process easier, like launching a new feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process even easier and quicker. There are two and a half million small businesses that use LinkedIn for hiring, so don't miss out on your opportunity. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Thank you again for making Locked On Bucks your first listener view every single day. Every day, make sure you are coming back tomorrow. We are going to go live Friday evening, primetime live show. Plenty to talk about. Can't wait to uh, chat with all of you that join in on the live chat. But in the meantime, if you want to hear the latest news from around all sports, NBA and NHL free agency underway, NFL news because the NFL NFL never sleeps, the MLB, the WNBA, the Olympics, but you want to hear more than just national narratives and you want the biggest stories without the fake manufactured screaming, make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without the screaming. Locked On Sports today is streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Buccaneers head coach Todd Bowles made an appearance on the Pirate Parlay podcast with J.C. Allen of Bucks Game Day. Shout out David Harrison, who still does some work over there at Bucks Game Day. And J.C. asked him about second-year linebacker Servasie Dennis and where he stands. Bowles said, quote, he's definitely in competition. I mean, K.J. Britt is our starter, obviously, but we look for Servasie to play quite a bit this year in a lot of packages that we have. Bowles went on to say, K.J. has been our unquestioned leader since spring. He's very vocal. He has natural leadership qualities. He's a very good football player. He doesn't have the athletic ability that Levante David has, but not many people do. That does not mean he cannot play football. He's a heck of a football player. He's a natural leader. He's a very good thumper, and he is a very good communicator. So the communication on the field helps us a great deal. He is kind of my eyes and ears out there, and the more he knows, the more he communicates, the better will be, end quote. Well, that answers a big question before training camp gets underway. Now, we've been moving forward on this show under the assumption that Britt was going to get the starting job, but I also spoke about Dennis being in a position going into his second season where he could compete for that job and potentially take Britt's place, especially given some of the shortcomings Britt has in pass coverage. With that said, it looks like this the decision is already locked and loaded. Todd Bull said it himself, and following a solid year when he took over the starting job for Devin White, K.J. Britt is firmly planted in the starting role. So that leaves a few competitions heading into training camp, and I'm looking forward to hearing Evan's thoughts on a few of those before camp kicks off. But the biggest ones are going to be the battle between Ben Bredesen and Sue Opeta at left guard, Jalen McMillan, Shepard, Palmer for wide receiver three, Bucky Irving, Chase Edmonds for RB2, Tyke Smith, Christian Izian, and Tavier Tana Thomas for slot corner, and then the edge rush rotation. I would say the locked on Bucks odds on favorites at each spot are Jalen McMillan, Bucky Irving, Christian Izian at their respective positions. As far as edge rusher, you know that Yaya Diaby is locked and loaded, but I would say the other starter is probably going to be Joe Tryon Shoyinka with Anthony Nelson as the first guy in on the rotation, followed by rookie Chris Braswell. Now, six weeks ago, I would have said that it was probably Randy Gregory that was first in line to jump in and give Yaya or JTS a breather, but who knows what's going on with him and if they've resolved those issues from him skipping mandatory minicamp. Plenty of time for Gregory to get back in the coaches and teammates' good graces, but it'll take some doing. He's not just going to walk in after all of those things that went down and just be handed that top rotation spot. Nelson has been there, and he's been in Tampa for a long time, but Nelson has been around this entire offseason. Gregory is the one that decided to play hooky. Now, look, 
if there's a serious situation that he was dealing with or some extenuating circumstances, that's a completely different issue. Maybe if that is the case, that's not going to be disclosed to the public. But Todd Bowles on day one called it an unexcused absence. So I'm operating off of that premise. And that means that Gregory is at the bottom of the pecking order here. It's for sure going to be interesting to see how the Bucks use Tyke Smith, who was a safety but played a lot in that slot corner spot at Georgia. Is he in? Same thing. He was a safety and transitioned really well into the starting slot corner position last season. Uh, you know, Christian Izian is going to fight tooth and nail to keep that job that he earned as an undrafted rookie out of Rutgers. So if we see Tyke Smith out there taking snaps away from Christian Izian, then we know that he went out and he earned that job. Izian is not going to roll over and concede anything after how hard he worked to get that job in the first place, it doesn't matter how early Tyke Smith was drafted. It doesn't matter what the tangibles or the measurables or the scheme or any of that. Izian is going to do everything he can to make sure that he is the starter. He basically said as much on Twitter. So, you know, that is going to be a vicious battle. Iron sharpens iron. Uh, you know, competition breeds excellence. All of those cliches. And it's kind of the same thing with Bucky Irving and Chase Edmonds. Chase is the incumbent. He is the one that should be penciled in as the RB2 to start training camp. So Bucky has to do something or multiple somethings to take that job away from him. It's not going to be handed to him just because he was a draft pick a few months ago. We know that Bucky has the skills and the determination to win that job, but he has to show that on the field, especially in his opportunities during the preseason. And as we get into the preseason, I'm going to give you checklists for every game of what to watch for, what players to watch, what different things to be looking for. Preseason is fun to watch if you know what to look for. Certainly, Bucky Irving is going to be one of those things to look for in each of the preseason games. It's one thing to go out there and ball out in practice and in training camp, but you have to show that you can get the job done in live action to know your plays, know your assignments and pass protection, know your audibles, know your routes. Bucky has a long climb to get to that RB2 spot, but I think he does get there sooner than later. Finally, the most important of all of the position battles is for starting left guard between Ben Bredesen and Sua Opeta. And we're going to get to that coming up next on today's episode of Locked on Bucks. I love sports. I love them so much that I never want them to stop. But as the playoffs wind down, we get fewer games and the sports aren't sportsing like I want them to. But FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. All I have to do is open up the app and dream up bets anytime I'm in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Right now, the Dodgers are the favorites to win the World Series of plus 320, while the Tampa Bay Rays are struggling a little bit and are sitting at plus 15,000. If you'd rather get in on some NFL or NHL odds early on, the Chiefs and 49ers are tied atop the Super Bowl odds at plus 600, while the Buccaneers are at plus 5,500. Then you have the Edmonton Oilers as the favorite to win next year's Stanley Cup Finals at plus 850, followed by the defending champion Panthers at plus 950, and then the Tampa Bay Lightning, because they're stupid and let Steven Stamkos go to Nashville, are sitting at plus 2,000. Head over to FanDuel.com and start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Wrapping things up here on a Thursday episode of the Locked On Bucks podcast. And there is a reason I saved this one until after the break. And it's because it plays perfectly into what David Kenyon of Bleacher Report just wrote about. So Kenyon wrote up his predictions for all 32 NFL teams' biggest bust this season. Guys like Marquez Valdez Scantling in Buffalo. And for you, longtime everydayers, you know my feelings on Marquez Valdez Scantling. Uh, Deshaun Watson 
in Cleveland, Daniel Jones in New York, Trevor Penning in New Orleans, and then Ben Bredesen in Tampa Bay. Kenyon, Kenyon said, quote, really the choice is the position. Ben Bredesen is competing with Sua Opeta at left guard, and both are concerning. They already traded spots as the first stringers in OTAs, and that shuffle is a real possibility in the fall because neither one has been a regular NFL starter, end quote. This is absolutely, without question, a fair assessment by Kenyon over at Bleacher Report. It does not matter which of the two players wins this job. Both of them are essentially the highest bust risk on the roster. For those that stuck with the show all offseason long, You'll remember early on when I was referring to Opeta as the starter, and that was because he was all the buzz and all the rage early in the process, early in OTAs. The coaches could not stop talking about what a great player he was. Then you get to mandatory minicamp, and Bredesen ends up taking every single first team snap at left guard, leading us to believe that he was now the favorite. So this competition may still be neck and neck heading into training camp and maybe even into the season. Whoever wins may wind up on a very short leash. If they have a bad game, if they're not run blocking, if they are leaving Baker, you know, out to pasture for, for these uh, pass rushers on opposing defenses, they could get yanked and replaced with the other one. But that said, it's hard to narrow down a player or even a position that's better position or worse position, however you want to put it, to bust this coming season. You could throw Baker out there, sure, with the fear that he's going to regress and then the Bucks struggle because of it, that he doesn't live up to his career year last year. He doesn't improve on some of these marks, and you see him kind of come back down to earth a little bit. That's certainly within the realm of possibility. Graham Barton, as a rookie, is going to go through some growing pains. Yaya Diaby, after getting quite a bit of hype over you know the course of the offseason and getting a lot of love, you know maybe he's not exactly what the Bucks or what a lot of us think he could be. But the answer is undoubtedly Bredesen or Opeta, whoever wins this job. This was a position that struggled last season and the Bucs didn't do as much as maybe they wanted to in order to address it. Now, of course, maybe they really liked what they saw from both Bredesen and Opeta and feel that either could be a reliable starter if given enough of an opportunity to consistently get on the field. Regardless, this is who they're going to have moving forward this season. And if the player that wins that job doesn't pan out, it can bring the whole offense to a screeching halt. It'll negatively affect Graham Barton, who is going to have his own issues to deal with as a rookie. It's going to hurt the run game. It's going to cause Baker to run for his life a dozen times a game, end up being sacked 40 times again over the course of the season, turn what should be easy gains into potential sacks or turnovers, you know, from strip sacks or Baker trying to force the ball because he's under pressure and it gets intercepted. It, it's going to play into every facet of the offense. This is one move that the Bucks either got right or right enough at least to get through the season and then potentially address it again in free agency or the draft next year or they made a grave miscalculation and it's going to cost them games. If it ends up costing them games because they can't get the run game going, they can't protect Baker Mayfield. You're, you're leaving Graham Barton susceptible to being bum rushed by, you know, blitzers on top of defensive linemen. It could end up, you know, affecting Tristan Wirfs on the other side who has to overcompensate. And now all of a sudden he's not playing to the level that we know he's capable of. That could be the difference between 10 and seven and eight and nine. It could be the difference between winning the division again and making your fifth straight postseason appearance or missing the playoffs and drafting 15th, 16th, 17th. And then all of a sudden, all those 
you know, doubters, all those people that we called out over the course of the off season saying, you know, the Bucks aren't, you know, contenders. They're in a weak division. Baker Mayfield's not it. The Falcons are poised, yada, yada, yada. All of that, they can all point and say, look, see, we told you this team wasn't as good as you all thought they were just because they made it to the divisional round last year. And I think that's patently false. But when it comes to an offensive line, if all five spots are not working in unison, if you have one weak link in that chain, the whole thing can snap. So there is going to be a magnifying glass over Bredesen and over Opeta to see how they're doing throughout the course of training camp, throughout the preseason, to see who wins that job. And I do truly, truly believe that if whoever wins, let's say for the sake of argument, that it's Ben Bredesen, if he wins that job and all of a sudden you're having interior pass rush get to Baker two to three times a game, and over the first three weeks he's been sacked seven times, and Rashad White, still can't run up the middle because the pressure gets there too quickly and the lane closes. You can see uh, Bredesen yanked out of that starting role and replaced with Opeta. And if that doesn't work, it's going to be very reminiscent of what we saw last year with Matt Filer struggling, then getting injured, then Aaron Stinney coming in, and he struggled as well. He was not the Aaron Stinney that we saw fill in you know, during the playoff run in 2020, start in the Super Bowl. Um, it, it could really derail this entire Buccaneers offense. If just one, that one left guard position isn't up to snuff, isn't just average. That's all they need to be is just average. And if they can't live up to that, we could be in for a very, very long season. That's going to do it for this episode of Locked on Bucks. Please check out everything going on over at BucksNation.com. Make sure that you are following on Twitter at Locked on Bucks at JRCO underscore Bucks. Become an insider. Go to JointSubtext.com slash Locked on Bucks or click the link in the show notes for one-on-one -on -one text conversations with me. No ads, no hashtags, nothing like that. And of course, make sure you're subscribed on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Hope you all have an absolutely outstanding day. Stay safe, stay healthy, fire the cannons. I want to thank you so much for joining me right here on Locked On Bucks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. <laughs>